I'm Paul Livingston and uh, we're here again for another uh, demonstration uh, doing some artwork. Uh, what I'd like to do this morning would be like a pastoral little scene uh, in the countryside, lightly rolling hills, uh, maybe a farm house and a barn and or a barn in the background and uh, a young woman sitting per uh, perhaps under a shady tree on a stony fence line. I just use that as a verbal description, but how I got to that. There's the, there's the ultimate scene, how that should uh, be roughly turning out. This was uh, a, a, a color sketch I did from one of the pareidolia practices, and that's what it was in the red. All the red you see is the, uh, the paint that I used that day in, in making this pareidolia thing, and then I delineated uh, with a little bit of black pen the shapes and the, the parts of the composition that I wanted to enhance and bring up to that finish. Then basically breaking that down in the lines of flow in that painting, would be, the strong lines would be this hillside in the meadow here, and this stone wall along here, and this relatively strong vertical um, with, that'll be the tree. So <clears throat> this was the second stage. This um, was the original with plus the, uh, the pen work, then the structure of it and seeing how that works, and then a color workup of the idea to see um, how it might change, and even when I do this, it will change. So let's start, and I'll do the back, the color in the background. Yak, yak, yak. Stop yak. Okay, starting with the larger brush. Uh, I want that sky to go in. I'll moisten my brush. Use the big brush here so we can cover some, so we can cover some ground. A little bit of cerulean blue. Touch of the light. Light blue, nice bright sky under there, and we'll pick out the clouds in a little bit. Brush that over. So it comes fairly thin on the canvas. Still see the, uh, you know, if I left it like that, it'd be streaky, and you'd see the texture in the canvas. I want to keep the moist brush. A little bit of a little bit of cerulean blue and the light blue. While it's moist, you've got a lot of play in how you spread that around. But just brushing like that slowly starts to dry it and you can work those streaks out. Another way of working, and I, I guess I can't do it right now, but would be mixing with the uh, matte medium and spreading it through. But this is just just water thinned. That's going to take a few minutes to dry if I sit here and wait for it. Or I could use the dryer. That just starts the drying process on that. But, um, now I can move along with the structure lines of the, of the picture. I should tack, tack this up here. Um, Okay, just a light, a light brownie with a little bit of Prussian blue in it to give it a, a warm gray kind of a feel to it and quite liquid, quite thin. And I'll just kind of start looking at the structure lines here and this coming down, down the hill, down down a hill and sort of across a meadow like that. I've got a fairly strong vertical here. This is one of the things I'm going to change compared to that one. I'm going to put it a little slightly different configuration of tree. 
And we've got a figure down here. Just a, a dab of gray here to just position the, the things. And then we've got these other hills coming around here. How does that come through? It almost lines up with the top of this wall here, the top. So that hill kind of... And this little dip here, that line that kind of comes in the line, in the shade and points to this figure. So compositionally, we've got uh, these shapes here that are coming, these lines that are kind of drawing your attention right now to this figure. So that's the point of the story here. And in here, we'll have this farmhouse sitting up here perhaps, and a little further back. Just bar. Now we know where, where things are, are positioned and, and we can start blocking things in. This tree will be fairly major in, in like a big Elmer spreading maple coming, growing out of a fence line. I like my pictures to tell a story in a lot of cases, or, or to hint at, at a story or a mystery that you can uh, that you can kind of get into. It's not yes, it's nice to make uh, make a pretty picture, but I like it to have a meaning. This one for for me tells a little bit of a story of uh, you know con contemplation, trying to get it away from it all. If she lives up here on the farm and. You know, just getting away for a little bit of private time to think and time for thinking. How that house goes here. Well, that's, that's where it lives anyway. And the stone wall. One thing we want to consider in our um, uh, working up with the painting is to remember and establish where your eye level is. I see myself, as I've sketched it in here now, I kind of see myself sitting a little bit higher elevation than this person down here. Uh, somewhere up about here, I think, is my eye level, I think. Just, well, actually, it's just almost bang on half, which is no big sin, but generally, um, generally it's, it's thought not to be a good compositional uh, thing, but I think the way that it draws the eye in down here, it's the more of the focus down here than the horizon because it's behind the hill. The hill is up here and your eye level's down be behind. So, continue up this mass of leaves up here and the possible branches that it's That's just the presence of the tree. It's not a lot of detail to it yet. But might have some fence posts in there coming down that hillside. So that's it drawing out there. These rocks, rocks can be many shapes and forms. Let's leave it for now and, uh, and, and leave room for uh, a little bit of improvisation as we uh, develop this a little bit further. But that's the essence of the, the composition. We might have some more plants up here. Okay. Now, that sky now hasn't, hasn't been intruded on too much and it is still cool but basically dry to the touch and I was able to put in this thin little presence of, uh, of tone in there to sketch it in. So there's my sketch and we're ready to go and start adding a little bit more color. I'd like to see maybe a little bit of pinkishness maybe in those 
in the sky, so uh, I'll indicate some clouds with a little tiny little bit of red into that to, to mix into a little bit of pink. And we'll see how that Gonna need, need more weight on those. Get more some, some more of that pink in there. And lots of room for coming back to this a little bit later and uh, adding and tweaking. We'll see what we can get done in an hour or so here. So that cloud is in behind the tree. I'll add a little bit of color now to the lower part. Let that have a chance to dry. If you wanted to do um, a more solid sky than that, I like the way that that has a washy, soft feel to it with just that one application. And as it, as it dried, <clears throat> it kind of smoothed out, but I, I kind of like the streaky look through it. It has a, an effect of some sort of cloud a little bit for me anyways. Um, if you wanted to smooth it out, you could do another layer, another glaze. Um, or more, one or two more, um, to, um, to smooth out the colors in that or blend some others into it. But I kind of like the watercolory feeling that this is having, so I'll continue on this vein. I can always, if I want, wanted to do more on the clouds, I could always come back, or, or on the sky there, I could always come back and paint like the negative space be, behind the clouds, but right now I kind of like the, the lightness of it. So here we go, planting some fields. And always kind of kind of keep some good moisture on the brush. Helps to move it about. A little, a little dip of water, not a whole lot, but just enough to make it moist and it helps it spread. working towards the foreground, first the sky, and then I'll end up doing this field here too. Working in layers. I'm gonna th throw a little bit of blue, I think, into this next layer back here to indicate a sort of a fence line, a change in plane. Let that dry for a little bit. This is much the same way as you would um, maybe be applying the watercolor and touching it, letting it, letting it run. Not a, not a trait that I really like in a lot of cases, but if, it, if I can get rid of these runny things, or just if they've occurred and you like them that way, then turn it. Uh, turn it flat and let it dry like that because sometimes those uh, little accidents uh, suggest something else that you could uh, make happen in the picture. I'm going to try to nurture that for a minute if I may. Okay, I'm pretty much beyond those early stages here. I'm following my, my color sketch here. So uh, let's see, we'll go to uh, a little bit cooler green in that other area behind. Keep some of that. But just a change of color, it's still some of the same green in there, but.
see how puddly that is. That is a way that a, a, a lot of acrylics don't get used, and I rather like the, the that character that that the acrylics are so flexible. They don't always have to be gobbed on heavy and thick and there's quite a lot of range with acrylic. See this field here is still a little bit wet so I'm getting to be able to take advantage of, of that moisture that's down there and have a, let it let, have a little bit of play too. Let's see what these. Okay, I think it needs to have a little bit of a drying now, so I'm going to no make the noise again. Now, how many times have I said, you're the artist, you're in charge? Um, you can make the painting whatever you want, however you feel like it. It's, uh, in this case, on working from original material or your own photograph, um, you can have the artistic license to change as you wish. So I think one thing I'm going to do, instead of having the house over here and the barn back here, I'm going to switch it. And so this will be the white house back there. Just to indicate. It's a little above my eye level. So those Parallel lines, those horizontal lines of the roof line are going to go down a bit. So that's that place. And then we'll put the barn in here too, mass, just mass that in. A light gray, weathered gray. And a little bit bigger because it's closer and it's a bigger structure anyway. Again, uh, it's above your eye level, so that roof line is going to slope downwards a little bit. Just continuing a little bit of drawing with the, with the piece. Okay. All right. Now, uh, See mass in the tree here. I can come back into the barn once I see what's left. Um, so we'll mass in some of these leaves here, indicate, mix a few c colors of green and yellowy brown and just sort of see. And I don't want that paint running, so I want it to place on these on the structure of these branches here. Yep. Pretty big spreading tree out in, the, out in the end of the field. So if you if this is a, a painting that's going to tell a story, it's considered illustrative. And nothing wrong with illustrative. So if the story is there, what kind of a story is in, in behind it? You figure this person down here, he or she, what they're thinking of as they're sitting down on this stone wall here. And Perhaps now that we have some objects in here, we can start to think about where the light is coming from, what side of a building, what side of a tree is exposed to the light. And then we can consider the light and shadow in there. Uh, I'm gonna wet the whistle here.
One thing I kind of like about this composition, um, changing the tree from that kind of thing, is it opens it up a little bit more. I can see more of the property over here, and also a little bit uh, more of this hill in the background, just way off in the distance. And this is where the cool colors come in for me in my in my uh, paintings of landscapes. I like the way that blues uh, disappear into the distance or, or fade off into the distance. We can use a little bit of the, the blue makes that look more, the eye perceives it as being more distant than a warm color, say if I painted that yellow or a bright green. Distant hills. So if you had any trees back there, that might appear a hillside over here, getting a little bit closer, a little, a little more intensive in color. A little tree line of cedars. cedars. Okay. And last but not least is the indication of the where the stone wall goes and how those stones go. I was very quick the way I did those. I think I'll do it the same way because it keeps it sort of random. What color is a rock? Uh, a brown, gray, uh, white, black, blue, even green. Uh, you hardly go wrong. Just mix up something that you think looks like a, a nice uh, rock, earthy color. Kind of following the lines of some of these blocks that I've got in here now. I need a little more gray with that. Payne's gray. These are the kind of stones that maybe a farmer would have, some earlier farmer would have hauled out, out of his field to make room for the crops. worth a fortune to a landscaper. We're working down here, coming down to the line, so to speak, to see this, uh, this person sitting on the wall over here. Cerulean blue was was nice for the sky. Looking at this now, it was nice for the sky, but I can't, I'm not crazy about it down here. I can easily change that because we're working with acrylic. have some other bushes coming up in here. Write your questions down about this thing as if you're, um, if you've got anything that's, um, if, you, if you're not clear about, please write your questions down and email me or uh, uh, wait till the discussion period that we end up having uh, with uh, with the Zoom, uh, if you have a chance to work on it.
I'm not talking much enough here. Who wants to know what? I just get concentrate, and I apologize for that because I just get concentrating on and thinking in the, in the picture and what should be there, what could be there. The mood of it changes all the time. I, and I just get into into that thought process and I lose lose track of time as as, I, as I'm adding stuff to it. I'm seeing this almost as a ramshackle, old, derelict kind of building and a half broken down barn. There'll be a lot of gaps in there. And the story, if we were talking about that, that story, I think this is a reminiscence, kind of a, a relationship between the person that's on here, reminiscing about old days or the earlier days or relatives that used to live on this, this land. And, that's, that's the mood, I think, that I want to try to convey in this. Not just... We'll knock this blue back a bit. Yeah, a little cooler blue. Okay. Now, uh, to continue with the stone wall there and the tree down in this area. Uh, finish, we'll get down to the end of the line here and finish this. of water to smooth to, to let that flow a tiny bit and grasses and weeds A lot of texture down in this kind of work that you'd put into uh, grasses and weeds if you uh, uh, feel so inclined. It can be a lot of work getting into it, but sometimes the textures that you get, the, the way that you're able to guide the eye into the picture, the, the flow of lines kind of takes you in there. Different color variations in the grasses. Here now, if you want to bring the bring the attention into that area, maybe the bend of these grasses on this side would be more leaning, directing the eye in that way. Not in a, in a big way, a big obvious way so much, but just, just subtle, but it, it does help to direct the eye to where you want it to be, and that's the point of making an illustrative kind of painting. Oops. One fun brush to work with for foreground is the uh, is the fan brush, like that, and just. Uh, Get a little bit of a few color on that, a few bits of color on that, and it's really good for indication of weeds and the wildflowers. And don't have to be heavy, but just bounce it on the side like that. You can get a few sweeps of it. This gives you some variation in there before uh, having to go all, all uh, 
involved with doing single strokes for uh, every blade of grass and every weed. Keeps it loose and random. Even on its side like this, bouncing it along, you get a little bit of texture. You want to be careful about being doing um, too repetitive strokes, like so many strokes like that, that they end up looking like they're all going the same same way. I like to change it up frequently as I'm doing it, so that uh, there's some variation in there. Okay. I'll put uh, a little bit of attention onto this person that's sitting here now. Um, just to try to get the attitude of the of the pose. So if I just take some skin color, like put them down as if they're naked there, and then I can put some I can get a sense of the, the body in there. I heard one artist re uh, refer to this kind of thing of putting some people into a painting, and he called them carrot people. They're just a little jot of a paintbrush, and so there's a naked person sitting on a rock for now. We'll put some clothes on. something a little bright that can catch the eye. Tiny little speck of warm color. In this case, I'll put a little bit of a warm red. So you see I'm down to a little brush here now. See, they're sitting there with their hands out to the side, resting on the on the rock, and then we build into that. It's not necessary that you got a, that you get a lot of um, really really fine detail. It's a small part of the whole overall picture. What you what your eye goes to because of the lines of the the fence there, the fence there, the hillside and the trees all comes down and your center of focus or is going to be there. So it's important that you get a sense of their body language, that they're relaxed or they're tense or they're afraid. I think they're looking fairly relaxed, but, but quiet. Like I say, it seems like a con contemplative kind of study on this. So we'll do a little more drawing on this barn here. The shape's been established. And I think if this if the, the light's coming from this side, it'll give me a chance to put light to keep the the front of the house here fairly light 
and a little bright, a little more brightness on the front of the barn there. It has a little bit of yellow in it. I don't think I need that. You, uh, just thinking of the texture on the front of an old barn, you might have a few boards missing. There'd be some gaps in there. This could be the old garage or a barn. convincing looking. See, I'm forgetting to speak again. Getting lost in the picture. All right. Um, around this person, uh, I could come in with a little bit more uh, texture coming up to and, and contrasting color and so, and texture would help that person stand out to, to punch the, the image of that person forward. It's a small shape, so you don't want to have a lot of heavy texture around it. But just to blend some of the color in there helps to bring that image forward. So the negative space painting begins. Uh, you might might be changing back and forth between brushes. <laughs> tendency is to get for for small detail like like in that the tendency is to get into a lot of a lot of detail it's a it's a practice or a, a neat thing to learn how to be a little bit looser with the thing i'm finding that So the stone wall, and I mentioned that before, it's easy enough to get waylaid and distracted in some other part of the painting. So you can start anywhere along the wall and I'm just poking in a sense of shadows or something where where these rocks are overlapping and. You could find this kind of countryside up anywhere. Oh, heck, even not too far north of town here, up on the ridges or parts of the country where you got a lot of stone. So as I come closer up here, some of these shapes of stones can get a little bit larger than the ones in front of them, or behind them in this case. So you get see one shape overlapping another and when you can put a little bit of shadow in and behind that to delineate and make some some uh, distinction between that shape and the one adjacent to it. it it's a slow build but kind of comes together in the end which is following some of the basic drawing principles of a perspective where shape in front of one shape in front of another and so on. See. 
I was up this past weekend onto a, into the land of rock and rivers and tall pines up in uh, Halliburton Highlands. Very nice camping weather. So as we're coming forward here, um, closer, closer and closer, the tendency is to get a little bit more detail or, or hint of detail um, in this closer area, in the closest weeds here and the plantings um, and, and the closest textures and, and uh, overlap of, of shapes up in the foreground here. As it goes back further in the distance, <coughs> excuse me, things get a little less distinct. But nevertheless, to kind of keep that sense of light and shadow, we keep that into the barn here. Oh, into the tree. I'm going to make some branches here in green. Now here... This tree, it's not really in the way of the barn, but the branch comes down, and as soon as you put something like this, a couple of branches, twigs, leaves, whatever, in front of something way back here, it just enhances that sense of perspective and, and going off into the distance. It doesn't need to be plunk, 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 object, 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 all separate from each other. The more that you can bring a sense of overlap to it, that helps to give a little more depth and, and pers that you're utilizing perspective to give it a sense of depth. And now that we see where the leaves are hanging, and help helps to indicate where perhaps to put a couple more, um, couple more limbs and twigs. I'll be back to this area for sure. If not on this on this demonstration, I'll be back to this just to fine tune some of that sense of space through that tree. But this gets you started anyways, and uh, we should be able to get this a little bit closer to finish before we leave. I like the way that sort of gives her a little space under there, and seeing it as a female shape rather than the farmer himself out there. Just use that, this quarter inch brush here, very lightly and fairly dry brush to pop in a little bit of texture of grasses on this field here. Lightly, a light touch with the dry brush. And Uh, got to figure out how to how to mold this little bit of landscape back here. This almost looks like it needs to be a pond. You could put a pond back there, a stream. Um, just more stones here for the time being. Finish off this wall here. Uh, 
that should be. I think that should be open through there. That's a good place for a gate. Just wet the paintbrush to get rid of a few of those strokes there. That's good. Dry that. And that'll be the indication of a couple of fence posts. tree fairly prominent in the picture is going to want to have some some detail to it it might even be close enough in the range here depending on how much texture and time you want to be putting into your painting that you know you could get into a fine brush and do a lot of texture on that bark if it was if you felt it was important. Do some research on, a little, on some different kinds of trees, birch trees or elms or maples and oaks. They all got different shapes. And eventually that, uh, the surface of this will maybe be, pick, be picking up a little bit of highlight from the, the sun coming from this direction. We've got a little bit of red in the barn and a little bit of pinkish in the clouds and red in her sweater, you know, there's something in there that sort of draws the eye. Little contrast kind of a thing issue here. Let's see how the side of this house, I haven't got any shadow on it yet, but what it would look like with a little bit of shadow would be something like Like that. So it's a, a, a pale blue against a pale blue. How do we bring that out and punch the house more forward? And how do we, how do we make this blocky shape here look a little more interesting? Um, 
and, and again, give it another layer of depth. So we'd be, be thinking about putting some trees or something behind there, something, a contrast that... So... So the house would maybe have... I'm just touching and dabbing a little bit with the, with the brush here. Be overgrown, maybe with some spreading lilac bushes or something that have way overgrown. In front of the bush in front of the wall gives you that much perspective in there. And again, by the side of the barn here. Okay. And this last th thing I did here on this fence line, I thought that sort of looked like a laneway through there. Try to pull up some something of that here. Fading off into the distance there, maybe going down that gully. Anyway, how are we for time on this? Uh, right now we're at, we're sitting on 55 minutes. Okay, I'll we'll start to wrap this up here now. Um, all right, so I'll be, I will continue this <clears throat> beyond uh, uh, at the studio and, and be thinking with some more things and uh, little bits, but it's little, little uh, touches that help to bring it forward. But um, I hope this has been interesting enough for you to, to think things to think about when I was talking enough about it. Um, things to think about when you're putting, uh, how you're analyzing your picture from, from its compositional masses in there. That's what, what started the idea. And then the construction of the picture, the lines that, that, that set up the geometry of the picture and the flow um, you can see from these strong lines that it brings your attention down into this area so that was a good spot to put the this person sitting on the uh, on the rock there just thinking and uh, I think I'm going to title this one um, some uh, time to think for that reason, you know, it just looks com contemplative and a time to think. So let that be it, and I, I hope that it's been of some help to you to uh, to see this as it builds. Um, I call this uh, particular lesson here the evolution of a painting. Uh, how it is? That is the way I do many of the many of the pieces I do uh, in the study. Have done so for years. Um, so, anyways, um, I look forward to hearing from you either email. Uh, once I get this finished up, I will try to send it out. And uh, if you can have any questions about it, uh, email me or uh, tune in for that uh, Zoom meeting in a week or two. So, uh, thanks for being with me, and uh, good day from the BOAA. Thank you.